Ja. Just setting up. Okay, I think we are live. Hello, everyone. I am so, so honored and grateful to have Rose Cole here. She is the founder of the Shamanic Academy and a beautiful client of mine who's graciously agreed to share her inspiring story about how she moved from, well, let's talk about, I'm gonna leave you to fill in the gaps, okay? I'm gonna leave you to fill in the gaps. Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. Mm, thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little, Rose, like what inspired you to say, okay, I desire to have support in this area of my life. I desire to work with a love coach. How was it before? Like what kind of sparked that desire for you? Hmm. Well, I was single for a couple of years and I knew that I just wanted to, I wanted to one, be the best partner that I could be for my future partner, because I was very clear. I wanted to stop dating meet the love of my life and be in a deep partnership. And I had had a series of relationships where the same issues were showing, showing up. And so I knew I was the common denominator. Why am I attracting this? And I'm a coach myself. And I just, I know that the fastest way that I'm going to be able to get to where I want to be is to have somebody show me the way. And I know that I have my own blind spots. Yeah. And so I just, I got to a point where I said, I'm not attracting this same pattern anymore. I want to bust through this. And so that's when I got very clear to hire you, which was an amazing decision and to get clear about, okay, what are the patterns and things within me that I want to change and switch that I'm attracting. So, so a different scenario is showing up in my life. Yeah. I love that. And how did it feel to actually then receive the support, right? And, and you are so good at receiving. Um, and that was something that I really appreciated in working with you. To, so to actually receive that support as you're navigating dating, how was that experience? Oh, it was lovely. Just because, you know, in dating, I, I felt like I was on my own. And sometimes I would just have questions like, well, what did this guy mean by this? Or do should I put my profile on this new dating site or what there's just questions that come up and you feel like you're doing it alone mm -hmm. and so it felt lovely to have that support and to also be able to just see what I'm see what I wasn't seeing to be able to move through things yeah. quicker um I love I want to expedite things I'm always like okay I want to yeah. just you know streamline things and so yeah it, it was amazing and can you if you like put yourself back there so we've been, we've, we wrapped up a couple of months ago. Now if you put yourself back to like, while we were actually coaching together, what were some of the aha moments or the lessons or like the moments that really like sunk in and you were like, yes, like I received that. I see that I resonate with that. Mm -hmm. So as you know, I'm the kind of person I run a successful business. I've been facilitating people for 25 years. I'm very intuitive in my life. In every other area, I trust my intuition. I'm totally guided by magic and synchronicity. But for some reason, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't trusting it with dating. And I'd have all these little gremlins come in. Like, what if you're alone for the rest of your life? Like you and your two cats. And, you know, what if he's never going to come? Or what if you're going to attract this, this, this pattern forever? What if there's nobody meant for you? What if there's nobody you can meet that can hold all of who you are? And, um, and so I guess one of the ahas was just looking back through my patterns and realizing, oh my gosh, in every other area of my life, I trust magic. I trust my intuition and learning how to trust my intuition in this area. And so it was helpful to go back and look at all of my patterns and, you know, that process that you led me to go through, to look at all of my past experience and start to see the through line, to be able to connect the dots so that we could see what I needed to change within myself to have a different pattern show up. So that was one of the really big ones. Mm -hmm. And then, as you know, so I'm the kind of person like in business, I can be very in my masculine. I get stuff done. I'm running this successful school, the Shamanic Academy. And so I'm all about like marketing funnels and optimizing my, you know, everything. And so I was doing that with dating and I had myself on four dating sites because I wanted to like optimize my chances of meeting him. And I was in my masculine and like, 
it was so much to manage, to manage that many conversations and that kind of energy. And it was wearing me out and sending me into my masculine, which was not the place that I wanted to be. I can be in that, that's fine to utilize being in my masculine for work, yeah. but I don't want to, I want to be my feminine in relationship. And so I think one of the other big ahas was seeing how to do it a different way, how to be in my feminine and attract from that place so that I could attract a man who was in his masculine that allowed me to relax into my feminine. And so helping me get off of three of the dating sites and just pick one. I was like, Oh no, you know, my mind was like, well, what if he can't find me? What if it doesn't happen? What if, um, what if I, the, the one dating site that I get rid of is the one that he's on. And I just don't know. And it's just so silly now looking back, like to not trust in the universe and trust in the divine unfolding. Um, yeah. (laughs) And we talked about, we brought in because as, as you know, your human designer, your projector. So we brought that in as like, okay, but you only have so much energy and, and we need to use it wisely. So like scattering across all these apps, managing all these conversations was like a part-time job. <laughs> oh my gosh. It totally was. I was so grateful that you have that understanding of, of human design and that you incorporate that into your work that made a huge difference because you were showing me how to date from my energetic type and how to respond in the right way. So that I'm entering into things correctly. So they're not draining me. It was totally draining me. It was totally short circuiting me because I wasn't relaxing into my essence and the, and the, my energetic makeup. So yeah, that made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember like right before there was like a moment where you were almost about to give up? (laughs) like and then there was even a moment where it was like maybe it's just not meant for me like maybe this is like my divine order or my soul contract I am not I'm not meant to have this in this lifetime how did we break through that and help open that up for you yeah yeah there was a moment a couple moments but I remember one big moment where it was just it felt exhausting I was tired of kissing frogs I was tired of the weird scenarios that were coming up and I remember you saying right before there's a breakthrough that this is usually the place that people arrive. And I didn't want to hear, I was just like so stubborn about it. And I think that that was the point where I still was on a few other dating apps and you were trying to convince me to trust (laughs) and relax into my feminine. And, you know, I can be a little stubborn sometimes and kind of like, ah, I didn't want to admit this, but you're like, well, think about the energy that you're cultivating like attachment and leaning in and being in your masculine and tension. Is that the place you want to attract him from? And that's where I I knew what you were saying is right. I I facilitate people too. And that's the funny part. You know, so many of us that we have a successful business, we're a coach, we're a facilitator, but we need to be able to have somebody to reflect back to us, our own medicine and see our own blind spots. Mm -hmm. So I knew what you were saying was right. I didn't want to, I'm not going to attract somebody from that place of, of energy. So that's when we got me off of the other sites. I started to get way more clear about who it was I was calling in so I could recognize him quickly. And I wasn't entertaining every conversation. So learning more about boundaries, energetic boundaries and physical boundaries and leaning back and having more fun with it and trusting the process and being more my feminine. And then now looking back, like how I met him, all of those other scenarios had to happen beforehand because there was just some divine timing that I had to wait for. And so I'm glad that I had all of those different learning experiences with people that didn't work out with. It was just preparing me in different ways and helping me move through different things so that when I did meet him, I, what I knew, I knew right away. Yeah. And what was amazing in that, even in those experiences that didn't work out, thankfully so, right. Um, that you were, we were clearly observing you breaking one pattern after the next. It was like, okay, we're moving through this. We're cracking through this. And I felt that was something that really helped you to keep going and keep your heart open is like feeling that you were breaking out of a pattern. You could like sense that for yourself. Totally. Is there anything else that sticks out for you? Like anything you learned about yourself in the process? Hmm. You actually, you've already mentioned so much to be honest. (laughs) Well, you know, one of the patterns was just not trusting my intuition with men. Like I said, I trust it in every other area. And I remember you saying like, you're just going to know. And people always say that you're just going to know. I'm like, but how am I going to know? What if I don't know? What if I mistake and helping me feel the the sensation in my body 
And what I realized is every other relationship I've ever had in my life, I knew it wasn't right. I knew it in my body. I felt it. I didn't listen to it. I didn't trust it. When I look back in hindsight, I knew there was a little voice inside or a physical sensation that was like, "Mm -mm." Mm -hmm. and so when in dating, I still, when I'd feel that sensation, I would talk myself out of it in my mind. Oh, but what if he, oh, but here, give him this leeway, give him this excuse. And you helped me to have much more firm boundaries of like, no, like that didn't feel good in your body. What did it feel like in your body? Or how did he show up? No, that you deserve, you know, it was about receiving more and really allowing a man who's noble and honoring of me and has all the boxes checked off that, that I, that I wanted to call in. He was, he's everything, this man. But if I would have settled with any of those other men, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been available to meet him. Mm -hmm. The other thing I really appreciated about what we did was I used to go off of, oh, here's what I like putting people in these really strict boxes. Mm -hmm. I thought he was going to look like. So I had a list of like, I don't know, 50 things. And he had to have these things and they were very specific. And so I was just going through and like categorizing people, but instead you helped me to narrow it down to a really succinct prayer the things that he has and the things that our relationship has. And it was a much shorter list. And so I feel like that distillation process that we went through, I reformulated my prayer. And then it was really about holding that prayer. And it's, this man is way more suited to me than any other man that I've been in. And I think, well, I know that if I would have gone off of some of the other things I was using to weed people out, I would have weeded this man out. I would have missed him, but it was more about just getting clear about, okay, not like categorizing people, but just holding, getting clear about what it is that I'm calling in and then holding that prayer. So that, that was a really beautiful process. I love that. Yeah. And I remember us talking about it, like, take your time to actually like, look at this person when you're looking at their profile, like feel the person. And because you are so intuitive that I know that that is one of your gifts. You don't just believe in magic. You live in magic. Right. So it's like, let's bring that here and make this experience magical. Yeah. So just before the four month mark of us working together, you met this beautiful man. Um, Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's also the backstory that I didn't actually, I don't know if you remember this. I didn't tell you this until like the very end of the right at the end. Yeah. (laughs) It was like the grand finale. So Right before I started working with you, as you know, I had just dated this guy briefly and it was a huge disappointment because he lied to me. And it was like, we'd only been dating for a couple months, but it was like a really big shock to my system because I'd been single for like two years and had opened myself to him. And I was just, it was really discombobulating to be that open. And so I remember after I broke things off with him, just crying this one night, just in my bed, just sobbing and just praying and just saying, please, I pray. And I ask to be able to feel this man, to see this man, my, my partner, to know what he's like, Uh, please send me some kind of sign. So I have hope that there is somebody coming. And that night I had a dream and I have never in my life had this happen where I've had a dream about someone and then met them in real life. I've never had that happen. As soon as I went to bed, I had this visceral dream and there was his face. I could see it clear as day. I could see his stature, his height, his hat, his beard, his eyes. And he was smiling, smiling and beaming at me. And instantly I just felt this well of love. And I knew this is my partner. I just knew. And the next day, I just didn't even want to wake up from bed. I was like, oh my gosh, he came and there he was. And I could remember our love for each other and our compatibility and all the things. And then I started looking for him and all the dating sites and I couldn't find him. A week went by, I'm like, where is he? And then I started to go into my head. Oh, this is silly. This is romantic. What if I just made this up? So I didn't tell anybody about it. Three weeks go by, I'm starting to lose hope. And I'm like, oh, I better not tell anybody about that silly romantic thing, you know? And then I got clear, okay, I'm ready to actually get help and sign up for Love Coach. I wanna see what I'm bringing to the table and be the most clear I can be. I didn't even tell you about this dream. Not until our last session. (laughs) (laughs) So then I go through like three, three and a half months with you, working with you. And that's when you helped me to narrow down to only one dating site Mm -hmm. and one prayer and lean way back 
and like really strict boundaries around who I'll even talk to or get on the phone, just really being my feminine, being the queen that I am. And then the, and then I went on a trip out of town, a seven hour drive away, and I forgot to turn off my Bumble app. Mm-hmm. So it start, started to show me men in this other town, which I wouldn't have looked because it was far away. And I'm there for work. And two of my friends told me, I have a feeling we both got the intuitive hit that you're going to meet somebody here. And I was like, what? well, I'm only going to see the retreat center. I'm going right home. I, I mean, unless he's here at this retreat center, nobody, but I noticed that my app was on and I was like, oh gosh, now I'm going to have to go through all these men that are in Arizona. Oh, I'll figure out that later. And I happened to see one of them. And I, as soon as I looked at him, I went, he looks a lot like that guy from, the, from my dream. Wouldn't that be so funny? And I, so, but I just turned it off. And then as soon as I got home, I looked at it and I went, wouldn't that be so funny if my two friends were right, that I technically did meet somebody while I was there because had I not gone there and had my app on, I never would have met him. So it was totally in this synchronistic way. And I looked at him and I'm like, he looks a lot like this guy in my, in my dream. As soon as we get on the phone, I look at him like, that is him. Hmm. And I still didn't want to fully believe it because I was like, well, what if it's not, or just because I went even went into my head, like, well, just because he was in my dream doesn't mean like we're supposed to be together forever. Maybe we're just supposed to have one phone date and you just don't get attached, you know, but as we were talking all these synchronicities, all of these things that were just like, ding, ding, ding. I just, I couldn't believe it. And, but here he lived, you know, seven hours away. So we get off the phone. I was like, I have to see this man in person because I, I will absolutely know. I knew on the phone, but I just thought, oh, I have to see him in person. So we made a plan to meet halfway in between and go on a hike. And as soon as we show up and he takes off his sunglasses, I just knew. I knew in that moment. And it was just like you said, he just, he felt like home. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is, this is my person. And I've never felt like that about anybody else before. And we went on our date and it was so sweet. And he knew right away. He told me later on too. He's like, my other prayer was, I prayed that he would recognize me. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have to be in so much fear about what if I don't recognize him? Mm -hmm. And he said, Rose, as soon as we started chatting, I knew, I knew. And he goes, but the crazy thing is I saw a picture of you and your daughter. And as soon as I saw her, I just recognized her. I just know her. And we had the most amazing first date ever. And I went home and I call, I'm driving home and I called my mom. I'm like, this is my person. I, this is, this is my man. And so now it's been like two and a half months. We are so happy. So compatible. He's making plans to move out here with his daughter from out to California. And we're just, we're so aligned. I've never been so compatible with someone. Both of us feel that way. We're just like, we can't believe how compatible we are and how many things we have in common. And yeah, we're just feeling incredibly grateful. Yeah. I love that. I love that story so much because it's a beautiful story. And also because sometimes people are so hesitant with online dating because they are fearful that then there's no magic, right? Like they didn't have the synchronistic meeting in person. Um, the magic can truly come right like the magic is so there and, and I know because we've discussed this like the the amount of synchronicities between you and him and just all the things you visualize and all the ways that all connects oh my gosh. it is it is truly magical like we could spend like the whole next hour talking about the synchronicity. oh my gosh it's incredible it's like I tell people and they're like what I mean, like I have a daughter named Violet. He has a daughter that's six months younger named Eilet. (laughs) Violet and Eilet. And we get them together and they're like like besties. And like, there's just so many things that were on my list and things way beyond I wouldn't have even known to ask. Yeah. So many, yeah, so many synchronicities. It's absolutely felt like magic. Yeah, I'm so excited for just like the life you two are creating together. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I remember even when you told me about that first date and you were driving out to meet this person, like for you were each driving like three or four hours or something. And something inside of me was like, yeah, yes. Like there is something here that absolutely for me feels so different. Everything about your energy, just it all felt, it all felt so different. I love it so much if you if somebody here is watching who is like wanting support but fearful that it's not going to work or afraid that maybe they aren't just meant to meet someone in this lifetime what would you have to say to them 
That's a great question. Two things. I feel like working on yourself is the best thing you can do to attract a different scenario because we are, we are the vibrational match of what we're attracting. And so I'm really glad that I invested in bettering myself to be the best possible partner that I could be. So I would attract a different kind of person because I really think that that's the key because otherwise we're just playing out our ancestral patterns, the things we, we inherited from our mom and our dad. And unless we do that deep excavation work, those patterns are just going to keep showing up. And so I think that that's why it's really helpful to have a coach, to have somebody that's just dedicated. I mean, I was going to my friends, but I was getting all kinds of crazy advice. It was like one way or no, you know, because they're just telling me from their ancestral patterns. So to have somebody that's going to give your, give you unbiased, like direct feedback that, so you can really, really move the patterns. And then the other thing I think, I really think the, the key is getting clear and then holding that steadfast prayer. Mm -hmm. And for a woman, if you want to attract a man who's in his masculine, it's really about being in your, in your feminine, being able to hold that. And that's what I really appreciated about you is it was a different way of attracting from my feminine, not from my masculine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I remember that. Like when we would sense the overthinking coming in or the contriving, it was like, like, let's come back to that intention. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And for anyone who's just probably like enchanted by you and charmed by you, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do in the world and how people can stay in touch? Oh, sure. I would love to. Well, I, I founded a shamanic school called the Shamanic Academy. It's an international school. We have students all over the world where we teach people how to activate and utilize their shamanic abilities. So we actually certify people as shamanic energy workers and energy practitioners. And so we teach all things in the world of magic, like real life magic, mm -hmm. um, using your intuitive abilities and your intuitive skills and um, actually becoming certified as um, in energy work. And so I, I feel very honored to be stewarding this, this sacred work. Our, our, we're actually in our enrollment period right now. And um, we have students all over the world who are joining. It's, it's exciting. And so my, what I love doing is helping people to realize that they all, we all have shamanic abilities available to us. We're wired for it. It's our birthright. And many of us have, have um, shut down our shamanic abilities over time because we haven't had somebody show us how to utilize these skills and abilities. So I actually have a little free gift to give to everyone just to, if you're I'll curious share. about what I'm saying, what I'm talking about, and you want to delve in deeper and understand what are these shamanic abilities, which ones do you have and how do you activate them? I have like a, I have a little free guidebook. It's a really easy read. It's rosecole.com forward slash free gift. It's R O S E C O L E dot com forward slash free gift. And so that'll get you going in the direction to this discovery of magic and intuitive gifts and utilizing your shamanic abilities. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you so, so much for sharing your story. I appreciate it. You know what? Let me check and see if there are any questions. If, if anyone has any questions or comments about the story, like feel free to just tag us in, in this post yeah, um, and we can, and we can get, we can get to those. Thank yeah. you, Rose. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to share. I hope it inspires someone out there to keep holding the faith. He's coming. He's coming. Um, thank you so much for all of your help, Diana. It was really, really such a, one of the best gifts I've ever given myself to work with you. Oh, thank you. We'll say bye to Facebook, but I'd love for you to stay online. <laughs> okay.